Hello everybody, and welcome back to Prometheus. Today, as always, we got some work to do. Now, as I'm standing up here on top of this glass pyramid we built last episode, I'm looking down at our contact device, and I'm thinking, you know, it's definitely time that we finally get that thing upgraded into its final form with the satellite on top of it. So, let's take a jump down into the pond here. And let's take a look at our operations, because here on Prometheus, the next operation that I want to complete is Shadowed Investigation, and this will actually give us the free encryption satellite upgrade. So I think we kick things off today with a bang. Let's go ahead and do the shadowed investigation here. Group 15 wants you back on the case of that thief you were tailing. Seems they found another set of tracks. Want to check it out? Let's do it. Uh, one thing uh, that I also want to note, so the rewards here are actually um, increased because I'm on hard mode. Somebody noticed that in the comments last time, so you'll see this amount here, but the actual reward that we get um, when we do the operation, you can see it says 250 and 200, but since we're on hard mode, we actually get a higher amount. Group 15 wants you back on the case, Sherlock. I've even been given a message for you from some uptight rep lady. Hello, Prospector. My name is Clark. I will be your handler for the group on any future assignments. Our analysis of your performance confirms your viability as a potential partner to the group. Just between us, I'd advise you to watch your back when you're working with the group. They don't exactly have the best track record when it comes to the safety of their contractors. I'm not saying they're responsible, but, well, just be careful out there. There's not much else I can do for you from here. Stay sharp. A little cougar out there. Alright, so this mission basically involves us going to the swamp biome. So we're going to head down there, and there are going to be three locations where we have to set up a radar. Um, and in doing so, whenever you set up the radar, it's going to call a ton of animals to your position. So you're going to need to defend yourself, fend off a ton of animals, and keep that radar safe. Uh, you can do something similar like what we did with the enzyme geyser and build like a, a little wall around it. Um, I think we should be fine just going in with our shotgun. The horde mode is much, much more difficult than uh, protecting the radar, so we should be able to get by with our shotgun. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and craft up a few more slugs for our shotguns. So we'll be nice and well armed for this. Get our food buffs going and then let's head over there and get this mission knocked out. So let's get 71 slugs crafted up here. Hopefully we get some double crafts. Alright, we got one single double craft. Not bad. Uh, let's go ahead and take 100 of those. Oh, might as well just grab them all. Uh, stick those in our inventory. Um, and as we do a couple of last minute preparations here, I'm also utilizing the uh, mission resupply here, so I'll go ahead and do that again. And with that, I've been gathering up a couple of extra beacons. Uh, this is one of the missions that you can kind of farm for free beacons. Um, the end of the mission requires that you place a beacon in the base that you find. So if you do the mission resupply, you can gather up a few of them. Uh, this extra radar I'm just going to dump on the ground. We have a radar on our back already. You only really need one of them, and if it ends up breaking, you can just do another resupply out in the battleground. Uh, but yeah, with that taken care of, we got our ammo. Uh, we have our spare beacons. So I'm going to go ahead, get my food buffs up and running and head on over to the mission location. And if you're ever out on your MOA and you spot some wheat like this, you can just go ahead, grab up a little bit of that, craft up a seed feed that way. Super quick and easy. So I'm gonna make sure I buff my MOA up here and get on my way. Now with the Leica update coming, I'm also thinking that maybe we want to tame up a couple different animals. Um, definitely I want to get a Terranus. 
I think with the new update, one of the things that they said is that you'll be able to sacrifice inventory slots on the Terranus, but make him a lot faster. So maybe he'll even be able to rival the MOA with that speed. And even if he's just a little bit slower than the MOA uh, with maxed out speed, I still think he would be a useful uh, companion. Uh, the Tyrannus actually has the ability to be set to defensive mode, so you can use him to kind of tank and attack uh, creatures while you're out on your missions. So that's a useful aspect of the Tyrannus. I just can't get over how slow he is, so <laughs> that's why I don't really use it. Um, but with that new update, maybe he'll be fast and maybe he'll be a lot more useful um, as a defensive ally. So we'll, we'll probably look into capturing a Tyrannus as well today. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and knock this mission out. This is the zone. It's around here somewhere. Alright, so we arrived at the first radar spot. I'm going to go ahead and set up my little platform from our MOA. So there's no cliffside for us to use, but I did bring um, all the pillars that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a little platform for him here. Get him on up here nice and safe. Alright, now he'll be totally fine up there uh, while we do this mission. So, make sure we're all prepared here. Now get our taxidermy knife. We're going to want to try and get some taxidermies from these guys. I believe the first uh, encounter here is Stone Jaws, if I remember correctly. So, we just post up here on this little rock. Let's get this going. There you go. Stations online. And let's keep an eye out for any angry, violent creatures that want to destroy our radar. Oh, looks like we got our first taker here. Is indeed a stone jaw. One shot, one kill. Let's grab his vestige. And get this next guy. So he's going straight for our MOA. That's another useful part of having your animal out here is it will draw aggro, so it's kind of like a decoy. Um, and if he's safe up on that platform, it's no problem. Yeah, the stone jaw's weak point is its chest, so keep that in mind. Oh, that's a bear. Okay. One shot, one kill on the bear as well. I don't remember there being bears for this quest. Maybe that's a hard mode special. Couldn't quite get the weak spot there. There's another level. Almost done. 96%. And it's done. We got one more stone jaw coming in here. Alright. And that is the first radar taken care of. Very nice. Go ahead and get this other trophy here. Make sure that's not... Oh, that is a needler. Okay. <laughs> Lucky guess on where his head was there. Let's gather all these trophies up and move on to the next spot. Alright, our first needler trophy there. And when you're ready to get your MOA, just build your ramp up there again, deconstruct the thing, and move on to the next place. Let's grab an Ubis trophy while we're out here. I think the crocodile's weak point is like right on its nose. Very hard to hit. Um, let's get a vestige from him too. Very nice. It's gonna be nighttime here pretty soon, but that's not a problem. We have batteries back at the base. We are totally fine to keep going on this mission. As you can see, it's nighttime and our rested buff is still lasting here. We still have 200 seconds left on it, so we can go pretty much the entire day on our current rested buff, which is nice. 
Uh, if we could get it even... Oh, yep, next zone. Uh, if we could get it even higher and have it last like deeper into the night, I think that would be really awesome. Let's go ahead and get our MOA's protective structure up and get this next radar going. Oh, here we go. It's a Drac. Don't need to spend any expensive shotgun ammo on that guy. Uh-oh. And we got a weather event coming in. Acid showers. Probably one of the worst ones. <laughs> oh! So that's a problem. Can't hit him. There we go. That dreadwing is a problem. Get back in range of the scanner. Uh oh. Now this is just out of range of the scanner. Oh, we got the Alpha Wolf trophy this time. Oh. Alright, we're still 85%. Acid rain. We have a ton of HP. Uh, but once this is done, we're definitely going to want to uh, try and find a shelter. Alright, it's done. Let's pick this up and let's see if we can get a cave <laughs> nearby here. The fringe of the terror zone. Never thought I'd see it open up. I'm not sure if anyone knows the full story. From memory, this is where we saw the first signs of terraforming washout. Enough for the predictive algorithm to prove out we failed. I mean, do you want to live in a critter infested swamp? You might just have to go with the good old rock strategy here. Uh, I only have my miasmic pick. Let's just go ahead, burrow a little hole in this rock, and wait the storm out. Alright, the red part of the storm is over. That's good enough for now. Let's uh, head on over to the next site. Alright, we've arrived at the last place here. I'm going to go ahead and set up my MOA's structure, and this one, I believe, is a ton of needlers. So, not the easiest of the bunch, but we'll be able to get it done, no problem. All right, let's see what we got here. Needler time. It's hard to see his head from this distance. You're being paid close. to babysit that radar. Oh. You'll need to get in range. There we go. Just gonna stay close to the radar here. Oh no, that's really not good. We need you close to the scanner, Prospector. Okay, <laughs> hopefully he's okay up there. Definitely took some damage. Got a bunch of heavy bandages here. I don't know if that's another needle spawning over behind my MOA. Prospector, need you to get back to the radar. Oh, come on now. We need you close to the scanner, Prospector. Mo might be in trouble over there. I might move him. Hmm. 
Only five more percent to go. Okay, we got it done. Let's go look at our Mo over here, make sure he's okay. Okay, the Moa took a ton of damage. That's really unfortunate. <laughs> Let's get him down from there. Oh yeah, he's hurting. But we got it done, so get a couple more Needler trophies here. And move on to the final zone. Huh. That must be it. See if you can get inside. All right. Let's we'll bring our Moa up the staircase a little bit. Get him out of harm's way. Uh, it's on the other side. Let's get him right here for now. Should be fine. And let's head on up. All right. So there are a bunch of random crafting benches in here. Uh, you know, a nice little bed here. The main thing that you need is the audio log. All done. Let's get that beacon down and transmitting. And then... I'm just gonna grab this iron crate. I think it looks pretty cool. Don't need any of the other stuff really. Uh, crop plots. You, know, you could deconstruct this whole base and, uh, you know, get all of the ref the interior wood and all of that, but. I think I'm just gonna leave it for now. There's some clay building pieces too, which are pretty nice. Uh, but the final objective of this mission is deploy the beacon, and we are done. Sounds like your paycheck's just arrived. Let's let's check it out. I'm gonna take the beacon with us. I don't think there's anything in these uh, crafting benches. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave all this. We don't really need any of it. Uh, but yeah, I pick up the beacon. Unless you want a permanent marker in this treehouse. And then get on over to our reward. Good work, Prospector. You may proceed to collect your reward with our compliments. Damn. They really do watch you in their ranks. This here thing will decrypt confidential faction communications. That means it'll get you into direct contact with faction reps. These don't get sent out very often. Go ahead and set it up. Alright, so we got our satellite upgrade for free here. That thing is extremely, extremely expensive if you craft it on your own. So, you know, if you're on Prometheus, definitely just do the mission and get it that way. Uh, but yeah, with that taken care of, let's head on back to the base and get our fancy new satellite dish up on top. All right, we made it back to the base just as the sun is starting to rise. Uh, I'm actually curious to see how our power is doing, so let's take a quick look at that here. And so, okay, our solar panels are already back on before 7 a.m., and our batteries weren't even at half capacity, so we are totally, totally fine with our current power setup. More than enough to work through the entire night with all of our drills running and all of our lights on, so that's very comforting to know. Go ahead and stick all of our vestiges in here. We got a good amount. So Alpha Wolf, Bear, Crocodile, Drac, Bunch of Needlers, Stone Jaws, Strider, Ubis. We got a ton of good stuff from that. Very happy. And with that taken care of, let's go ahead and set up our fancy new satellite dish. That is awesome. 375 Ren, 300 Exotics, and an awesome, awesome new satellite up on the top of our base. Let's take a look at it from down there. That is looking absolutely awesome. Super pleased with that. <laughs> the sun rising right behind it, silhouetted against the purple sky. Really, really happy. All right, so with that taken care of, uh, I'm also realizing we never actually made attachments for our head armor or leg armor, or rather feet armor. So I'm gonna go ahead and craft up an attachment for our head and feet here. Um, I think the best option for the head is probably this one. It gives you 15% more crit damage. 
Uh, the other ones are kind of just like resistance specific, so poison resist, uh, a little bit better storm exposure resist, some cave resistances here. Um, yeah, so outside of resistances, the only really offensive one is this, so I'm going to craft this one up for our head. We'll also be able to see world of bosses on the map. And then for our feet, uh, I think I'm just going to go with this one a little bit more. Crouching movement speed is always nice. Minus perceived threat when stealth. So on hard mode, animals actually have higher perception. So this will help sort of offset the hard mode difficulty when stealth. And then we'll also move a little bit faster while stealth. So I'll get these two things crafted up and attached right now. All right, we got our armors all ready to go here. Let's get these babies equipped. Excellent. So 15% more crit damage, and we're going to move better while crouched and have better stealth. So I don't know if you can notice it. We're moving a little bit better, a little bit quicker while we're stealthed here. Um, but yeah, so the other thing I wanted to get taken care of pretty early on in today's episode was let's see if we can't find a Tyrannus to claim as our own and just sort of be prepared for the new Leica update when that comes out. Who knows when it's going to come out, um, but when it does, I want to be ready with, uh, you know, we have our blue back here. I'm actually not sure if the blue back is going to be mountable in the new one, in the new update. I didn't see it listed in the patch notes. It might be. Um, hopefully it is. Uh, but we'll definitely want to get ourselves a Tyrannus, so let's go out there and see if we can't find one. So while I'm out and about, I noticed that our copper drill is no longer active. Its inventory is totally full, as you can see. So we're going to have to craft up a little bit more storage, get uh, you know all of our raw, unprocessed ores stored away for a rainy day. Uh, so once we get ourselves our new friend here, let's go ahead and uh, craft up some more storages as well. All right, and I spotted ourselves a baby Tyrannus over here. Go ahead and claim him for our own. We take care of the mother here. And where did the baby go? Over here. All right, let's get on home, buddy. Let's go ahead and claim a Tyrannus Vestige while we're at it here. All right, let's head back. All right, welcome home, little buddy. Let's get him in the barn. Alright, he was able to get in there no problem. Perfect. He's got his bed ready for him. He's got plenty of food and water. Let's go ahead and get him tamed up. Alright, and I also spotted a buffalo over here. Let's go ahead and get a buffalo in our base going too. Grab a trophy while we're at it. Alright. Got our buffalo across the bridge. Let's get him in the barn. We're going to be absolutely packed in the barn now. We're going to have two moas, a horse. Oh, I need to get him to stop following me. <laughs> two moas, a horse, a blueback, and a buffalo. All taming up in here. Maybe we actually need to make some doors while these guys are taming so they stop wandering out. I don't like having the doors on the barn, but uh, it seems like it might be necessary for the taming process here. Alright, we got doors all over the barn now. A lot of people were asking about putting doors on the barn. I kind of prefer it without the doors. Maybe after they stop taming, uh, we'll remove them again. But for the time being, you know, that's how it's going to look like with doors. Maybe we just leave them in there. Uh, keep them open. You know, we're totally safe from animals with this moat surrounding us. I haven't had a single animal attack our animals since we moved them into the barn, so... You know, we're totally secure as far as protection from dangerous creatures go. Um, ooh, a random little lightning strike. But yeah, so, you know, with the new Leica update coming in, we're going to have all these nice creatures. Be able to test them out, level them up. We'll have a buffalo, a Tyrannus. We got our two Moas, of course, and a blueback. Um, you know, there's also going to be the Shaggy Zebra. Maybe we want to grab one of those once they're available as a tame, too. It's going to be really packed in here. <laughs> uh, we might need to make a couple more food and water troughs just for all the creatures. 
um, you know, they'll also be bringing things like new feed system. So uh, it should be easier to keep your animals fed and watered as well with that new update. Uh, but for the time being, you know, we're going to have to keep up on our chores here. Make sure we keep our waters filled up. Fortunately, we have this nice, easy access to water right here. Super been super convenient. Um, but yeah, very cool. Just got to make sure these guys stay fed. I've been using honey um, since we have so much leftover honey right now. Um, honey also doesn't spoil, so it'll just stay in there indefinitely. So that should be a nice way to keep our animals fed and uh, keep our crops buffed and nice and green for as long as we need it. Alright, so I actually found a titanium deposit out here in the grasslands. So uh, that's also useful to know. So titanium. I also found another platinum over here in this area. So both platinum and titanium can spawn as deep ore nodes out in the grasslands. Um, as far as the mineable nodes go, those only spawn in the specific biomes, but um, you can get the deep veins out in the grasslands, so that's useful to know. Good morning, everybody. It is a bright and beautiful day here on Prometheus, and our new animals have officially tamed. We have Diogenes here. Great name. Excellent name. Make sure we set him to stay. And then we have Benedict. Excellent. So we got ourselves two awesome new mounts here. Uh, we're going to probably build a few more food and water troughs, make sure everybody stays fed and watered. Okay, so if you want to actually ride the buffalo, it's the regular riding saddle. Uh, the pack saddle just gives it a ton more inventory space. We get Benedict, the new one here. And our good friend, the buffalo, will get two three years old saddle. Alright, we're going to give Diogenes the basic riding saddle here. This is two threes old saddle. And we have Benedict over here with the new saddle. So this is how it looks when you're mounted on the horse. Some people were asking what it looks like to be mounted on these other animals. So here we have the horse, as you can see. Uh, the horse actually has an attack. So if you left click the mouse, the horse actually can be used in battle like this. And the other cool thing is you can set the uh, the Tyrannus as defensive and he will actually go ahead and attack animals for you um, if they ever get too close. So that's how the uh, Tyrannus works. And the buffalo also can be set to defensive. His um, left click ability is also a sort of headbutt attack. So these are both a little bit more offensive. I think as far as like battle ready and battle hardened animals go, I think the horse is probably the best, the uh, the Tyrannus. I think it's a little bit stronger in terms of attack power than the buffalo. Um, but yeah, both of those are interesting sort of defensive options. Let's make sure we set them to passive for now. Um, but yeah, that is our Tyrannus here and the, the uh, buffalo all saddled up and ready to go for the new Leica update. All right, and I also crafted up a couple more iron storage cupboards here. I'm going to get those placed up next to our other ones. Very cool, and both of those are the expanded version. I crafted them on the other character. Let's go ahead and grab all of that copper that we had lying around. And make sure that my, that drill is up and working for us. Absolutely awesome. It feels good having way more copper than you're ever going to need. <laughs> copper is always such a huge problem early on, but you know, with this drill going for us and our we have a massive stockpile of copper too, and you know, really at this point we don't have that much need for electronics um, as far as crafting benches go. So we are in a really good spot as far as ores go. The only thing that we could really use a, a bit more of at this point is iron. Um, you know, maybe we do another miasmic pickaxe run, get a bunch more miasmic iron for ourselves. It would have been nice to have found a iron deep drill, um, but we weren't that lucky yet. 
Uh, but what I do want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and craft up another drill and get that set up on our clay deposit. So that way we'll have our access to a ton of clay ramps. Um, I have a, all my remainder clay sort of baking up in here. We're going to have a good amount, but you know, if we want to build ramps sort of all over the map, we're going to need a lot more than that. So I'm going to go ahead and get one more drill crafted up and stick that down on that clay deposit. All right, we got our drill. Let's go get this hooked up on our clay node. All right, we got our clay mining up. Now, I think while we're out here, we just check a couple more deep veins. See if we can't find anything useful. Okay, so we found an obsidian node. Uh, maybe we just get our biofuel set up on this thing. Uh, so we'll just have a little bit of a stockpile of obsidian if we ever need it, but that's super useful to know. Now, for our research points, there are a couple more things that I want here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the flow meter. We'll get one of these set up on our base, so this way we can check on our electricity network without needing to have the uh, electricity wire tool in our inventory. So that'll be very useful. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and research the composite drop ship recall beacon. This will allow us to summon our drop pod wherever we throw this item, and you can do this as many times as you want. Uh, this is a pretty useful thing if you want to transport really heavy items really far across the map. Basically what you can do is, you know, say you want to create a new base, you can load up a bunch of crafting benches and concrete building materials into your dropship, go to where you want to build the base and then summon your dropship there, and it'll come with its full inventory of planet side items. So it's a really useful thing to have. Uh, there is a workshop version of that item as well. Uh, right here, the Sinotai Dropship Recall Beacon. So you can go ahead and research this thing. It does the exact same thing. And if you were doing missions, um, like the mission mode and not open world, this is a very useful item to make sure you wrap up your missions as quickly as possible. Then the other thing I'm going to start thinking about doing is maybe we get the Thumper. I definitely want to eventually use the Thumper next to that big lava cavern. That will respawn all of the ores in that cavern for us. We'll have to fight some pretty big waves of enemies to actually complete this, but we're going to want the Thumper for sure, so let's research this. And then the other main thing that I really want to look into is exotics harvesting. So with the Leica update coming, there is a module that's really, really powerful for mounted creatures, and that requires a ton of red exotics. So what I think our main mission for today is going to be now is, let's see if we can't find ourselves the red exotics location here on our map. So I'm going to get the exotics harvester here. This will allow us to actually harvest the exotics when we find it. And then in order to locate those exotics, we're going to need the electric radar here. This will show us the direction of the uh, volatile raw exotics spawn. So we're going to take this out into the volcanic biome, set this thing up. It's going to attract a lot of creatures. We're going to have to defend it, um, similar to the mission that we just did. Uh, but this will actually do a scan on our map and show us the general direction of our exotics. So let's go ahead and grab this too. Now we have a flash storm coming in. Let's go ahead and shut our door as that passes by and get all of this new stuff crafted up. All right, we have everything that we need, I believe. So we'll get our uh, exotics harvester crafted. Let's go ahead and craft up a thumper and the electric radar. Awesome, there we go. All three of those all crafted up for us. So we are running very low on iron here and I'm thinking, let's go ahead and thump that lava cavern get all of the ores that we mined in there to respawn and get ourselves a ton of iron to replenish our stocks. Now the thumper requires 1500 electricity to run. I'm going to go ahead and research the wind turbine. I'm not a huge fan of these as long-term power solutions, but as far as just like a cheap, quick little thing to deploy uh, when you're doing something like the thumper, the wind turbine is actually very useful. So I'm going to research this, craft one of those up as well. All right, and just like that, we are ready to thump. So I'm going to make sure to grab some poison pills as well. 
Make sure we're resistant to any poison damage from the cave worms that are spawning. Uh, I think we'll be just fine with the amount of ammunition that we have. So let's go ahead, hop on our MOA. Got the big, gigantic thumper on our back. And let's go thump that cave. All right, so here we are at the cave. Um, what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and park our MOA deep inside of the cave here, where he'll be nice and safe. And as you can see, we could place the thumper actually in here. Um, and maybe let's just see what that looks like. And we can see the radius of it. So it doesn't extend all the way out into um, the next biome. But I'm not really sure how the fight will be um, if we do it in like a little cramped space like this. I think it would be pretty tough actually. Maybe what we do is try placing the thumper here, and then we're going to have to wire the windmill all the way from the outside of the cave. Um, but yeah, let's try placing the thumper there, see how the fight goes. It's going to spawn some giant uh, sandworms. So they're going to be very large in this little tiny space. Uh, but let's just see how it goes. I'll get my windmill set up out here. That should be just fine. Alright, it's running, and then let's run our wire to where we want to get the thumper going. Alright, so I think this big open space should be okay to fight in. Uh, let's get the thumper down here. Of course we have an ash storm coming in as soon as we do this. Uh, we should be sheltered from it in here though. Uh, let's get this thing hooked up. Alright. Risk level high. That's going to be quite a fight. But as you can see, you know, deep into the cave like this, we have all of this that's going to respawn for us. It's including a lot of this uh, sort of lava cavern over here. Let's go ahead and pop a poison pill. And give this thing a shot. big boy down. It is a little difficult to see in here. Slowly chugging along here, almost 20%. Alright, we got another big one coming. Alright. So it is a little tough fighting them in this tiny little cave because their heads kind of clip through the top of the cave, but fortunately we're able to get the shots in when it roars at us. Another late night of work here on Prometheus. Deep into the night, and we're thumping away. Those guys are no problem at all. Just one shot them. Another one coming here. The beauty of the slugs. Oh, got another big one. It sounds like he's going to be right there. Alright, this is troublesome. Oh, that was a good shot right there. <laughs> that was good. Oh, we did catch pneumonia, so good thing I have a couple of these. Make sure our stamina stays topped off. So two good criticals, plus one armor-piercing shot. So the slugs are armor-piercing, too. Um, so when he has his mouth closed, we have decent hard point penetration, so we're able to get some good damage even when he's not roaring at us. Another big one. Now 
right, we got a rhythm down for those guys. Two crits, one armor penetration shot, and we are gravy. All right, maybe we'll get one more spawn before this thing finishes up here. Oh, never mind. We are officially done, and as you can see, all of the ores have popped back into existence. Tons and tons of beautiful, beautiful ores. Let's go ahead, pick this thing back up. That thing is very heavy. Um, but yeah, look at this. All of that iron that we could possibly dream of. We got titanium right before our very eyes. Coal. All of this stuff respawned. Uh, it doesn't seem like the obsidian respawned, however. Because um, I remember there was some obsidian right up there. So maybe obsidian is not counted as one of the ores that can respawn, but uh, with that taken care of, let's just snag up a ton of iron and get on home with our haul. Alright, and a little bit of coal to finish things off. We are totally loaded up. Let's hop on our MOA and get our spoils back to the base. Alright, we have made it back to the base safe and sound. Our pockets stuffed with ores thanks to this awesome thumper. That was a lot of fun actually, doing it in the cave. It added a little bit of extra challenge I feel like, not being able to easily shoot the uh, the worms when they spawned. So that was an interesting thumper run. I definitely recommend using the thumper. Um, you know, you'll get more than you bargain for if you do it in a little cave like that, but uh, yeah, we got it done and that's the main point there. But yeah, with that taken care of, you know, we have our iron supply all taken care of for quite some time now. I think it's time we take a well-deserved rest, and in the morning, we got one more big project to take care of. So let's rest up well, and head out over to the volcanic biome once again tomorrow morning. Good morning, everybody. We are getting ready to set off on our red exotics hunt. And one last thing I want to do here in the base before we set out is let's get up that flow meter. Um, I think we're going to have it just set up right here next to our doorway. That'll be pretty nice. So every time that we want to check our electricity, we're not going to need the electricity tool in our inventory anymore. We're just going to be able to look at that flow meter and get a read of how our electricity is doing. All right, very nice. Let's get that thing set up. All right, I think that looks fine. You know, it's a little tiny bit of pipe sticking out, a little tiny bit of wire sticking out, but I don't think we can get much better than that. And just like that, uh, you can click into here and check on your um, power network. And then if you hold F, you can switch to your water network. You can see how much water we're using, how much electricity we're using absolutely nice and it adds up the supply and demand for you so that's something else that um, I've been saying incorrectly is when you look at your demand priority demand and normal demand are separate so you have to add them together so you can see it's 17750 as total demand here um, and our supply is 29,000 during the day and at night you know we have way more than enough with as long as our water wheels are running and our wind turbine is running, uh, we can easily run all the way through the entire night with these six batteries. Very nice. All right, so let's grab our electric radar and head over to the electric biome and see if we can't find ourselves our red exotics tree. All right, made it back to the basalt expanse. Now, we have to find a good place to set up our radar. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and repair these ramps. Uh, I didn't prepare the clay ramps or anything like that quite yet. I think I wanna locate uh, maybe just how far away this red tree is straight out of the gate. And then from there, figure out what we wanna do in terms of ramping up this place. All right, so we got a little lava broodling over there. Let's just take him out before we start this thing up. arrows back here. Uh, let's go ahead and grab a vestige from him too, might as well. And what I'm gonna do is set up uh, our radar on top of this rock here. Just right up here. It'll be nice and protected from any attacking animals. 
place right there. We'll get our windmill down. Uh, we have a lava back and a broodling fighting over there. Interesting. All right. Get this thing hooked up. Very nice. All right. I'm going to destroy this ramp. Oh, we got the redbacks coming in. They're coming from all over the place here. Another level for us. Oh, and it looks like our scan is complete. So we're good to uh, turn that thing off. Get our ramp back up there. Okay, scan complete. Let's turn this thing off. Cool. Gather these boys back up. Awesome. Quick and easy. So that's why you want to build your thing up on a rock like that, because all these animals are going to try and destroy it. Uh, let's get a couple of vestiges from these guys and go on a little adventure. All right, so our radar is pointing in this direction here. So I'm thinking it might actually be on the other side of the zone. There's a tunnel, I believe, right here that leads into another area. Um, that's a possible spawn for it, or we could be lucky and it could be out in this area somewhere. So let's go ahead, head in that direction. Uh, let's just make a pin in that direction over here. Um, is that... It's kind of pointing in this direction here. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be on the other side of the, the cavern. But let's go ahead in that direction and see what we can find. Alright, and before we head all the way out there, I'm going to go ahead and do one more scan right here. Um, while these animals are fighting each other. <laughs> oh. He wanted a piece of me instead. Okay, uh, I'm going to do one more scan right here. Alright. We'll just stay up here this time. Got some more redbacks coming in. Alright. Scan complete. Okay, so... Hmm... This is saying it's down in this direction now. So to be quite honest, I'm not 100% sure how to read what I'm seeing here. Um, it might be on this side, or it might be all the way over in this area. Um, so that's a little unfortunate. We didn't get as clear information as I was hoping for. Maybe we go over into the other zone and do a scan over there and see what we're looking at. Yeah, it sure feels a lot better exploring out here with a full oxygen bottle, not having to worry about asphyxiation. Uh, but at least we know that we can get uh, oxygen from drifters should the occasion arise. Alright, so here's the tunnel connecting to the other zone of the map. It's right here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead head through this tunnel. And let's do another scan on the other side. And fortunately, because we have our lava armor, we don't really have to worry too much about the lava damage here. Uh, we can't just jump over it, but uh, you know, were we to step into the lava there, it wouldn't be an issue for us. Alright, here we are at the connecting tunnel again. We can try and jump across this, but it's really not a huge issue for us. Okay, I didn't make the jump. <laughs> but, again, with all of our buffs, not a big deal. That one a little better. Alright, we have made it to the other side. All the way up here. Uh, we continue to the right. There's a cave right there that we can check out. Uh, but let's continue over in this direction. Do another scan out here and see if we weren't correct in coming all the way out here. If it's on the other side, that would kind of stink, but... Uh, that would, would kind of stink in the short run. In the long run, that would actually be a lot better for us because we don't have to come all the way over here uh, every time we want to try and find ourselves some red exotics. 
Yeah, it is quite hot next to this lava, so you gotta be quick on your feet to get into a cooler area. Oh, I didn't even need to use the scanner. <laughs> there is our red exotics tree, right here. Uh, we're getting heat stroke, but we have identified the location of our red exotics. It is right here. Um, right across from where it was the scan location was, so now that we've identified that, we know that we have uh, quite a job ahead of us. Um, I'm actually going to just chill over here a little bit, let our temperature reset, and then head on back to the MOA and come up with a plan from there, because getting these red exotics is going to be a challenge. I think what we're going to have to do is build a temporary base out here and survive out here next to this red exotics tree um, until we've harvested it all. So I think that is going to be our next big project. And as I was going through the tunnel, I did check one of the offshoot caves in there really quickly and I saw a normal exotic spawn. So I'm going to go ahead and snag those up with my miasma pick before we head back to the MOA. And I decided to check this other offshoot cave just on the other side of the tunnel, and we found another exotics node. So we have two exotics nodes to grab with our miasmic. Very nice. Excellent. We are going to be swimming in purple exotics. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I missed clicking my sprint button right there. Oh well. Alright, we are back into the Basalt Expanse. We have an Ash Storm coming in. Uh, we might need to hunker down inside of a rock or a cave to wait this thing out. Alright, we are officially getting some exposure here. Um, there is a cave right over here, I believe, so let's maybe shelter in there and wait this thing out. I can see the tunnel. We are home sweet home. Let's get these exotics loaded onto Ramoa and head back to the base. 2-2, two, two, am I glad to see you. Let's get those exotics on you. Uh, how are you doing? Yeah, you're pretty hungry. Let's get you home. Get these exotics home. Get those baking up on our material cleanser. And We'll start thinking about what we have to do in order to claim all of those red exotics because we definitely want them before the Leica update. I 100% want the uh, the module that gives us better stamina and stamina and mount speed. Um, so it's a it's total stamina and mount speed buff. I believe it's 50 uh, percent movement speed buff on your mounts, and then a large amount of. Uh, stamina as well. We'll have to take a look at that in the workshop once we get back, but we 100% want that thing um, before the Leica update comes out. Alright, we have made it home safe and sound. Exotics in our pocket and armed with the knowledge of where our red exotics tree is. Alright, so that's going to be, what, 260 exotics for us? So very nice. Glad that we were able to snag those up. Uh, but yeah, it is late in the night. Let's check in on our power here. And we are ticking very slowly away at our batteries. We are more than fine with what we have going here. But yeah, with that taken care of, let's go ahead, take a well-deserved rest after that long adventure. Good morning, everybody. So... Armed with the knowledge of where our red exotics tree is, I'll show you the gear that it is that I'm after here. So if you look at modules and scroll all the way over here, uh, we see the pheromone module. So it was 50% maximum stamina, not movement speed, and then 25% more movement speed on our tamed creatures. So this thing is extremely powerful. Uh, you can actually stack multiple of these things. Um, for every duplicate module that you use, it's 50% less effective. So, uh, you know, you'll have a full powered one and then a second one will be 50% weaker. And then a third one, if you have a third one equipped, will be 50% weaker even still. So, um, even though it does 
scale down like that. If you have three of these things equipped at the same time, your mounts are just extremely fast. They never run out of stamina practically. Um, one of my favorite modules by far, especially with the MOA. Um, and with the new Leica update coming, you know, this thing will be really, really interesting to test out on other animals like the Tyrannus, maybe even the Shaggy Zebra. You know, we'll, we'll have a lot of experimentation to do, but before that update comes, I 100% want to get our hands on some red exotics and get that thing crafted up for us. And we got our exotics finished up. We got an absolute massive amount from that run. We got 160 here, I believe. Um, that is huge for us, so I think it's time we ship these back to the station. Uh, get the other ones that we have in here as well. Make sure we keep one in our storage. And let's get these shipped back to the station. 250 exotics, that is awesome. I'm gonna grab a little bit more honey for our animals here. Um, also, shout out to Ironside Gaming, his channel. Uh, he was the one who gave me the idea to use honey to feed the animals here. So we have so much honey in reserve and it never spoils. So it's a super useful thing if you're not going to be using it for your own cooking. Um, just put it in your animal feed boxes and you will be taken care of. And with that exotic shipment taken care of, you know, I'm starting to think we really want to get our hands on some red exotics so we can be prepared for the Leica update and get ourselves that animal module. So what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to prep up all of the things that we need for a little outpost base out in the lava biome. And we're going to set up a little outpost out there to gather and process the red exotics that we need. So I'm going to get those materials together and be back with you guys as soon as I have it ready. And as we're crafting that stuff up, I'm going to do a little bit of work on this side of the base as well. Uh, first off, we're going to move this electric water purifier. It is cramping our style over here, so we're going to get that out of the way. And then I'm also going to make a um, sink. And what the sink, the plumbed sink does is when you use it, it actually gives you a 15% higher bonus on your sleep effectiveness. So before we go to sleep, we're always going to want to use that sink hit the sack and then we'll get an even higher sleep bonus thanks to that so let's get all of that taken care of too so I'm gonna go ahead and research the plumbed sink here um, it's super cheap to make we have all this stuff already so let's get that crafted up fits nicely right there next to our kitchen bench very nice and it is all watered up press F here you can see we get a bonus uh, crafting speed movement speed sweep sleep quality 15% health regeneration so it's a pretty short in duration buff but if we're going for that 15% extra sleep quality that'll be really nice for us so for our outpost base what I'm thinking is we're gonna want a, another solar panel and a battery um, when we're done working in the outpost we can always bring these back with us to the main base but I think this will be more than enough electricity for anything that we need out in the volcanic biome. So let's craft up a solar panel and a battery and bring those with us out there. And before we go and set up our base and get all of that prepared, there's a mission that I want to do when we are out there in the volcanic biome, the magmatic extermination. Um, and in order to unlock that, we're actually going to have to complete Tempest Retrieval. This will be our very first red exotics here. So I think before we finish up the episode today, we'll get all of our preparations done for that base, but uh, in order to unlock this mission that we can complete while we're out there extracting those red exotics from the tree, let's go ahead and complete Tempest Retrieval today as well. We'll get two missions done in one. We got a pretty gnarly missing persons case here for you. Or in this case, people. A whole team has dropped off the radar. And in the worst possible place, too. You'll need to be careful. Otherwise, we'll be sending someone else to get you as well. Looks like you're back on Group 15's radar. They've had a team go missing. Prometheus. Seems like a bad place to get lost. You got some hellish weather on the horizon. You'll want to gear up well for this one. I'm not kidding about those storms. Walk in unprepared and you won't be walking back out. Uh, and... One, one more thing. 
That audio log you found last time? Well, it's sounded a lot like one of my old crew. Someone I haven't been in contact with for a long time. I have a rather uncomfortable feeling about what the group wants here, so keep your wits about you and your eyes open. And when I say be careful, I mean it. This is probably one of the most dangerous... Prospector, you may start at any time. Final contact with our staff has given us multiple possible locations. Our forecast indicates that weather may be an obstacle. I'd like to remind you that all data and or hardware that you recover during these assignments is the sole property of the group. Sharing said data with anyone outside of Group 15 will be considered an act of aggression and shall be dealt with accordingly. All Group 15 data is also encrypted for your safety, of course. All right. So this mission takes place. We have the oh. last known location of one of the team members marked on your map. Please proceed to this location immediately. All right. So this mission takes place out in the Arctic right next to our base, so it should be pretty quick to get over there. Um, I think it should be pretty quick to complete as well. Basically, you need to find uh, a few dead prospectors, get the audio logs off of their bodies. Um, there is also a Strider, which is one of the more lethal enemies here in Prometheus that we're going to have to take care of. So let's make sure that we're geared up, ready to go for that fight. Um, but with our brand new sink installed, I think it's time to take advantage of this sleep buff. I will see you guys for this mission, first thing in the morning. Good morning, everybody. We are out in the frigid tundra. Um, I decided to take care of this mission without my MOA. I really didn't do much preparation for it. I think we we're pretty much ready to go just the way we are for this one. Um, I did bring a few pillars. Uh, when you fight the Strider, uh, you can use those pillars to kind of build yourself a safe position and kind of snipe down at him. So that's pretty much the only preparation I did outside of, you know, getting my food buffs going. Uh, so we're out here. We just need to find the dead body. I think he's out on that island, if I remember correctly. Uh, let's go over to that island and see if we can't get this mission going for us. Unfortunate. We have a signal from the next nearest team member for you. Hopefully they will be more... intact. Alright. So, it is going to get pretty cold out in the uh, northern Arctic. I do have my tea and my coffee, so we can stack the, uh, the two temperature buffs, I believe, with that. Go ahead and grab my arrow. The only thing I want from is my arrow, really, right now. Walk past our nice clay deposit doing work for us. We're going to need a ton of clay. Um, we have a lot of animals out here right now. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to head over to the next spot. And uh, see if we can't get this mission taken care of. Let me go ahead and pop this coffee. So yeah, the two temperature buffs do stack on top of each other. So you can use that in a pinch. Um, some knowledge, so if you get the cold debuff, you have five minutes uh, before you get frostbite, before you'll get the second version of the cold debuff. So uh, before five minutes elapses with the cold debuff on your character, put down a campfire, just reset the timer, or you know, take a drink of coffee if that'll reset it for you. Um, and you will be safe and sound, no risk of getting frostbite. Oh, looks like we got a strider right over there. What was that? Prospector, there may be a threat nearby. So, I think I'm going to try the pillar strategy here. So let's get these pillars out. Set them to horizontal, and you can just kind of pillar out from the, uh... the wall here, and get a sniper shot down on him. Take care of him this way. All right. 
right, Snow Stalker. Nice and easy. Let's go down there and uh, get a vestige from him for sure. Vestige. Very cool. Grab a little bit of this meat as well here. Get our arrows back and continue with the mission. We also picked up this single shot pistol here. Might as well make use of it. Yeah, these guys each kind of drop a weapon for you. This guy's a crossbow, I think. Yeah. Fine. There is one more team member out there. The location from their last signal is on your map. Yeah, so I hope they introduce a new pistol into the game. You know, they, the trench shotgun was a fairly recent update. There used to only be kind of the really weak shotgun. Um, so, you know, it's definitely time for us to get something a little bit more powerful as far as pistols go. <laughs> I suck with it. Oh my gosh. Need to work on my aim. Got a headshot that time. Uh, let's go ahead and head on over to the final body over here. And we're going to have a little bit of a fighter in our hands with this guy. Um, I think you can do something similar with the pillar. There should be a little mountain next to him that you can pillar out on. Uh, but we'll have to see once we get over there. Watch your step out here. I urge you to proceed with caution. There are signs that the creature may still be in the area. Okay. Got a bunch of jaguars, a bunch of leopards. Uh, and there's the strider right there. Enraged. So... I'm not sure if we can use this mountain right here as a pillar place. I think we might have to go around to this side. Uh, and see if we can't take care of him with the pillar strategy over here. So with these guys, um, these sort of legendary animals, uh, they will reset their HP if you uh, don't kill them within their aggro range. So you, know, you kind of have to be a little bit close. Oops, place a pillar all the way down there for some reason. Um, but yeah, make sure you're a little bit close and take care of things. Nice headshot right there. The difficult part is getting the shots. He's gonna be running around. Yeah, the strategy is definitely working out. We can just get the shots on him. Can't hit his tail there. He's almost dead already. All right, there we go. A few more curious animals coming in here as long as they don't take my body. Oh my gosh, they're wiggling. Alright, let's get down there. Grab this trophy. Alright, another Strider trophy, awesome. Grab a little bit of leather. We're running kind of short on leather. I've been crafting up a ton of ropes. All right, and with that taken care well, of, the final so body. For rescuing the team. Some stabilized exotics too. We'll send in a cleanup detachment for body disposal shortly. Prospector, can you hear me? I'm transmitting direct by encrypted shortwave. Got a neat trick to get it through the upper atmosphere. Too much, but please uh, understand that it's, it's important for a, a, a friend. I need you to send me the data on that module. I've marked a location on your map, an old supply okay. drop. It's got a narrow beam communicator, so you can send the data to the security. I have a shaggy zebra as well here. I don't think we have one of his vestiges yet. Very nice. Ton of meat. Alright, so yeah, Saul 
is basically asking us to betray the group right here. So we're going to go over there. Saul is our old friend. We'll make sure that we get his uh, his long lost buddy's audio log over to Saul. All right, here we go. Got a spare contact device out here, too. That's nice. Um, so as far as loot goes, there isn't, isn't really that much of great stuff in here. I think I'll take the spear, some obsidian. Um, you know what? I'll take the iron cupboard, too. Never uh, never an issue having extra storage. It's MXC crate, platinum pick. Uh, don't need the silica, really, or the iron. Let's just grab this MXC crate here. Very nice. Uh, there's a bunch of charcoal in there. Alright, so we interact with this. audio log here. We're going to deliver that to the group now. Um, I don't know. Yeah, we can't take this device, I don't believe. Yeah, let's go ahead and deliver the log. Clear area. 75 red exotics. First red exotics of the playthrough. Oh, yes, departing. That feels good. And yeah, just like that. That was a really quick, simple, easy mission. Um, you know, if you're as far into the game as I am, it's pretty quick and simple. <laughs> you know, if you have all the best gear ready for you. Um, if you're not quite as geared up as I am, that mission can be pretty tricky, actually. Um, you can use the, uh, pillar strategy with something like, you know, a normal bow and get it taken care of that way, and you will be able to, you know, kill him without taking too much damage. Um, and if you get caught out in a bad weather event, you know, of course, that'll make things a little bit trickier, too. Yeah, we're just going to parkour our way down here. Probably take a little bit of damage. Oh, yeah, we sprained our ankle. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's taken care of. We also have, um, where are those? Seven stabilized exotics. That's seven more red exotics for us right there. Not a ton. Um, but, yeah, that feels really good. We are well on our way to getting that module for our animals. All we gotta do now is work on getting our outpost set up next to our red exotic tree, and we will be ready. Wow, we got a lot of titanium coming in here. Um, I don't have the weight capacity for it. Just take that much for now. We'll come back for the rest later. Alright, home sweet home. That was nice, quick, and easy. Let's get a uh, Strider Trophy set up for ourselves. I think that'll be a nice way to cap off the completion of that mission. And let's get the other one right there for now. Very awesome. The Snow Stalker defeated. And I stuck our seven stabilized exotics just in here for now. We're going to want a lot more of these things. And that is why we are working on getting all the pieces for our mobile base all the way out in the volcanic biome ready to go. Uh, but before we wrap up today's episode, we have a few more thank yous to say to all of the new channel members. So I expanded the monument here a little bit. Uh, replace the normal tea leaves with gorse tea. I think that looks like maybe a little bit better. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you to all the new subscribers. James Dodson, Jagged Power, Leo, Sylvan Dryad, Vivid Epiphany, Brutus, Eray Cemalioğlu. Irai Jamel Yol. Sorry that I absolutely butchered your name. Um, but thank you also so much for the subscription. 
Thank you to all of the new channel members. I'm really liking the way that this little monument is shaped up. I think it's a really cool looking place. It looks even better at night when you have the uh, oxide lamps illuminating it instead of the sunlight. Uh, but yeah, super pleased with how the channel has been growing and extremely, extremely grateful to all of the new channel members. So thank you, everybody. All right, and with that said, I think that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. You know, we have a plan of attack for what we want to do next. We know where our red exotics tree is, and it's just a matter of getting all the pieces together to get our base set up out there in the volcanic biome. And uh, we now also have the access to the next mission that takes place out in the volcanic biome. So while we're out there doing our red exotics harvesting, we'll be sure to take that mission and uh, complete that as well. But yeah, uh, super excited that all the progress we made today and super happy and grateful for all the new channel members and for all the people who are subscribing and leaving comments as always. Thank you so much for the support and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.